When I bought my first and only camera, I quickly tried to imitate the film look. But when trying it, I was never fully satisfied with the results. This has now changed thanks to a new tool named Deansor that I discovered very recently. I will talk to you about it and about how I use it in the second part of this video, but for now, let's focus on understanding what I mean when I refer to the film look and on why this look is so popular. While I do so, I will show you some travel images that I took during my vacation this summer and that are edited with a film look thanks to the tool I mentioned earlier. So, what's the film look that everyone is talking about? Before defining it, I just want to clarify that there is not one film look, since different film stocks will lead to different styles. Kodak Ektar, for example, is more on the red side of the color palette, while most Fujifilm film stocks tend to have a greenish tint and call the colors to them because they use different film emulsions. But for this video, I will focus on the film look understood as the look that a digital image has when it possesses a good amount of the common properties that film photographs share. Therefore, an easy way to define the film look is to look at the perceptible qualities that are present in film images and that are absent from digital images. The most obvious one, and perhaps the most important one too, is the presence of grain. Although digital images have digital noise, especially at ISO, Film grain has, in my opinion, a way more visually pleasing look, and this is due to their difference in nature. Film grain is physical, and its aspect depends on the size of the silver allied crystals used in the film emulsion, and digital noise is, well, simply digital. The second one that I would think of are the colors which are often blending together better in film images. And this is probably due to the differences in the color science used in both processes. To make it short, in film images, the color luminance contrast is more balanced than in digital images in which there is more luminance contrast than color one, which seems to lead to more satisfying tones in film images. Another difference is that film images have lower local micro contrast than digital images while still retaining a high global contrast. This basically means that a film image can be very sharp but will yet not have the very surgical look of digital in which every skin pore, for example, is visible. There also are other artifacts that are characteristic of film, such as halation, for example, that we do not find in digital images and that adds to the special look of film. And maybe another one that we can think of is that film images always feature a gas station. I'm obviously just kidding for this one. Considering all of what I just said, we can say that an image has a film look when an image is digital and when it tries to imitate some of the unique aspects of film. But now a question remains, why is the film look so popular? And when trying to explain this popularity of the film look, the first thing that came to my mind was inspired by the philosopher David Hume that considered mental images such as the ones enabled by visual recollection as degraded versions of the perceived scenes. In simpler terms, a souvenir is a degraded image of the one that led to that souvenir. If we consider this, then images featuring a film look are the physical representation of our mental image. We could therefore say that a digital image represents the scene as we saw it, and the film image represents it as we remember it. This might explain the strong feeling of nostalgia one might have when looking at film images. The popularity of the film look might also come from the fact that many people still have a sentimentally loaded contact with film imagery through family pictures, iconic images from the past, or their own journey as a photographer. Digital photography indeed offers an enormous amount of advantages compared to film, but it seems like the aesthetic of film images still hits stronger for a number of individuals. Film images also feel more organic, thanks to their grain that gives them a specific texture. It brings the scenes to life in a way that digital images struggle to do. Another reason for that popularity might also come from trends and from the fact that the film looks characteristic can also help generic images have more personality. And I'm not saying that they become good images, but they are a bit less bland. It can therefore be an easy way to feel like you have found your style, but it seems also obvious that a photographer's style stems from a lot more characteristics than a simple filmic look, sadly for me. In my case, my will to obtain a film look came from my own taste. 
I have always had a tendency to consider digital images as too sharp, almost too surgical, and even a bit too real. I think a lot of people have the same feeling. The images they like are mostly film images, but they do not want to struggle with the hundreds of downsides film has, and they resolve to try to imitate film. And for those people, and all of you that watched until now, I have a very strong solution if you want your digital images to be emulated to a film. The answer. This tool is the best one I have ever tried. It's not free, but definitely worth it if you are looking to have that film look in your images. I've tried editing for a film look in Lightroom, but it always took a lot of time. I have also used film simulations directly on my camera, and even though they are a good start, I was never fully satisfied with them. But since I used the answer, I think I have reached a new step in my edits and in making the images look like I wanted them to look. If you are also frustrated with your film look edits, I can only recommend you to use the answer and as stated before, you can get a 10% discount with my code 14 or 10. You can also purchase a video version of the plugin if you are going to videography. I have used it for color grading this video and some videos in the past and I have always been also very satisfied by it. So now that you have seen how images look like when they are edited with the answer, it's time for me to show you an overview of how I use it. Uh, this is not a detailed tutorial, I will just show you how I use the program to edit my images. So to start things off, go in Lightroom, choose a picture that you like, and then apply the settings that the answer recommends on the website. So that's what I'm doing here. You can see that I'm adjusting the exposure, the contrast, and the different other settings. You also have to do a linear curve, so you can have a bit of an influence on the contrast of the image. The main goal with this procedure is to have similar starting images. When I'm finished with this, I just adjust the exposure one more time, and then I notice that my colors are a bit blend, and I really want to make that red pop a bit more in the edit, and to make it contrast with the cloudy blue uh, sky. In order to do this, I just uh, decrease uh, the luminance and increase the saturation on some of those colors. And then when I think my image is ready, I right click on it and I just click on edit with the answer. Then the program will start. You will see that you have access to presets that are included uh, in the app. So if I wanted to, I could choose one of those presets, for example, this black and white one, which looks quite good on this image. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will show you how to work with the program uh, without using presets. So in order to do this, you go to profiles, you try to find the film profile that you like. And in this case, I'm deciding to use Kodak Vision 3 uh, 200T. I just double click on it and it applies to the image. And now to get a more filmic look, you have all the settings on the right uh, side of the program that you can use to adapt your look. And that's what I'm doing uh, as you can see. So I'm making basic adjustments. Then on the print setting, I can have an influence on the look depending on which paper it would be printed. I adjust, I also adjust a bit the color thanks to the color head tab. I'm deciding to give the image bluer loops and also to increase a bit uh, the red. And then you can also choose uh, the tone of your shadows, uh, mid-tones and highlights. And I'm playing a bit with it and trying to find the look that I basically like. And then the serious thing starts, uh, film grain, guys. So you can add film grain and customize it uh, with a lot of different options. And this is one of the, the great things about this program. It's how you can influence the grain, so you can decide on the amount, the, the resolution, if you want finer grain or larger one. In this case, I decide to make it a bit finer. And then you can also decide uh, how much grain there is in shadows, mid-tones and highlights. Then you can work on the halation, thanks to a lot of different settings as well. I won't get into too much details about how I use this, but basically you can change a lot of different settings and if you want to know everything about them you can download uh, the answers manual which is very complete and that will explain everything to you once i'm happy with the way aliation looks like i then activate the bloom tab which helps giving bloom to your images i'm reducing it a bit because i'm already using a glibber filter which helps with uh, making the light uh, diffuse a bit more and uh, in the end, I just decided to add a vignette to give it uh, a bit more of a filmic look. And I'm quite satisfied with the results. So then I can just click OK and the image will open in Lightroom and then you will only have to export it to your disk. So that was a very quick explanation of how the program works. If you need a more detailed explanation, you can always DM me. I would be really happy to help you use it if you decide to purchase it. And if you do so, if you want to buy it, don't forget to use my code 40.10. 
So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and to like the video. And see you in the next one.